Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday service at Ananda. Please take a moment at this time to silence your cell phones. And if you would like the, the words to the songs uh, and chants that we'll be singing, you could find them in the back of the chair in front of you. Please rise for the opening prayer. The voice of God calls us to awaken Him. How will He find us when He comes? Awake and ready. And when He asks us to dedicate ourselves ever more perfectly to Him, how will He find us? Awake and ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Divine Mother. Divine Mother. Friend, beloved God. Friend, beloved God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Babaji Krishna. Babaji Krishna. Mahiri Mahashaya. Mahiri Mahashaya. Shri Teshwar, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, we bow to you all. We bow to you all. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Blessed Master, Blessed Master, guide our lives, guide our lives according to your design. According to your design. Fill us with thy inspiration. Fill us with thy inspiration. Thy joy. Thy joy. And thy love. Love, that we might share with all. That we might share with all. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have some music. We will be saying, walk like a man. Oh 
first chant will be um, at thy feet, page 12, if you want to follow along. <coughs> Listen to my soul song, listen to my heart song, listen to my soul song, listen to my heart song. In secret in my soul, I will gather blossoms for thee. The next chant is Come Out of the Darkness, Mother, page 12.
<clears throat> Let's have a meditation for a few minutes. Staying inward, let's listen to um, this week's quality, self-confidence. Self-confidence, as it is normally understood, recalls to mind images of army generals and cowboy heroes, people in short who know their blacks from their whites. But life's alternatives are usually much more complex. Self-confidence on the spiritual path is of another order altogether. It means confidence in the inner self, not in the ego. It means living from within, living by truth rather than by opinions. It means living by what God wants, not by what man wants. Thus, it means living by faith in the sure knowledge that although man is fallible, God is infallible. And repeat after me. I live in the assurance of God's truth within. I live in the assurance of God's truth within. In my inner self. In my inner self. And not in the opinions of others. And not in the opinions of others. Lies true victory. Lies true victory. And now in a normal speaking voice. I live in the assurance of God's truth within. I live in the assurance of God's truth within. In my inner self. In and not in the opinions of others. Lies true victory. Now in a whisper. I live in the assurance of God's truth within. In my inner self. And not in the opinions of others. Lies true victory. And now silently. I live in the assurance of God's truth within, in my inner self, and not in the opinions of others, lies true victory. Pray with me silently. What matter if people blame me? Of what importance is their applause? I live to please thee, Lord, confident that when thou art with me, I am protected, though it be from an enemy horde. Oh. Peace.
Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Today's reading is from Rays of the One Light, weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. This week's reading, Many are the pathways to truth. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. On the dedication page of Swami Kriyananda's book, The Path, appears the following account. <coughs> a group of Paramahansa Yogananda's disciples had gone with him to see a movie about the life of Gandhev, a great saint of medieval India. Afterwards, they gathered and listened to the master explain certain subtler aspects of that inspiring story. A man in the group mentioned another film he had seen years earlier in India about the life of Mirabai, a famous woman saint. If you'd seen that movie, he exclaimed, you wouldn't even like this one. The guru rebuked him. Why make such comparisons? The lives of great saints manifest in various ways the same one God. The Bible contains a similar account in the Gospel of St. Saint, Saint Luke, chapter 9. And John said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth, followeth us not. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is with us. The more central a truth the greater the number of contexts in which it can be applied. Truth is like a pure white light containing within itself the full spectrum of the rainbow. Let no one tell you what your path to God ought to be. Many are the paths. Select your own according to the dictates of your own nature, no matter how out of step that puts you with other people. Sri Krishna, in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, states, Trying even unsuccessfully to fulfill one's own spiritual duty, dharma, is better than pursuing successfully the duties of others. Better death itself in the pursuance of one's own duties. The pursuance of another's duties is fraught with spiritual danger. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Om, Om, Om. of uh, all the natural disasters that have been happening around the world, um, I uh, was on the computer the other day and uh, was looking at them and uh, all the flooding and things that have been going on in northern India and stuff, there's been like 42 million people affected by the floods in India and Bangladesh that you don't really hear about. And then, of course, there's Mexico, the earthquakes and the, uh, um, the uh, hurricanes in, in Texas and uh, the hurricanes in Florida. And I saw this thing on the Internet the other day that said uh, Paramahansa's thoughts on the hurricanes in Florida. And I thought, what is this? Is, was it fake? Because I've seen other stuff like Abraham Lincoln's thoughts on the Internet and things like that, you know, that you know are just totally bogus, but this was written in 1929, and it was so powerful, I just decided I'd, I'd just to read it today. Paramahansa Yogananda, Thoughts on the Florida Disaster. Nature's calamities are occasioned by the sum total of the multitudinous wrong human thoughts. 
Every event in nature is the outcome of the thoughts of creation. We are all indissolubly linked together and bound up in a common fate. Our thoughts help to bind or to liberate the world at large. We are hungry and we find all the forces of nature, the earth, the sun, the wind and water, working together to yield our food. The more spiritually civilized we grow, the more we will control nature. The servant of nature rebels when the master of the house of civilization sleeps. This is why such a disaster as has recently happened in Florida deserves our universal sympathy. As a world race, we are all responsible for it. Let us show our practical sympathy by responding to the call of President Coolidge and con contributing to, I'm sorry, it's a little muddy here, contributing to the American Red Cross Fund for Florida Relief. We ought to help our brothers and sisters in distress, as we ourselves would welcome such if we were in similar circumstances. Thomas Kempis once pointed out to, to, pointed to a condemned criminal and said, there by the grace of God goes myself. It is true from a limited standpoint, but also from a unis, universal standpoint, we may well say of every man, there goes myself. We are not creatures, but the creators of this universe. Our thoughts and deeds have been attributed throughout the ages to tidal waves, forest fires, volcanic upheavals, no less than they have flowered forth in spiritual giants, innocent children, and in the petals of flowers. And then there's a little editor's note here about the, earth, the hurricane he was talking about had sustained winds of over 75 miles an hour for 24 hours, over 24 hours, which they said has never been uh, recorded until 1992 when Hurricane Andrew went by, went through. But it was just, to me, just such a powerful thing, that one phrase in there, we are not creatures of this world, we are the creators. I mean, you could meditate on that for hours and days. That is a very, very pow powerful statement. Basically saying that, you know, we're in this together. I mean, we are, we're born here, we die here, this is our home, this is our creation. And what we manifest in it is what we get, you know. It kind of lays the responsibility for everything on our shoulders. You know, it's, as a, as a creature here, we can be like a little squirrel running around and gathering the peanuts that people feed and burying them and holding them for later and do whatever we can. But a creature here takes no responsibility for what goes on around them. They just live their life. But Yogananda is telling us, no, we need, we're more than that. We, you know, we are the manifestation of God here. And we need, to, we need to take control of our lives, our thoughts, and do what we can. Um, it reminded me a little bit of that biblical verse uh, about Sodom and Gomorrah, where God said, if I find one righteous man in this city, I will spare it. You know, and that kind of points to us today. Um, it's, we're here to, to play our roles, you know. We're not, like Yogananda said, we're not, we're, this, this creation was made for our entertainment. We're not put here to suffer. We are here to entertain and to be entertained. That being said, we need to play our roles and play them well because, you know, we are also in a duality. You know, you just can't, where there's happiness, there's going to be sadness. Life deals us strong blows. Uh, it's, it's just the way it is. I mean, Roger's rocking down the road, car comes up behind him, knocks him out, almost kills him. You know, I have a friend of mine down in California. Um, Sue and I and my brother and um, um, some friends of ours are going to India in uh, January. And this guy has been wanting to go to India for years. And he, he uh, was really excited about it and asking me all these questions about it. And then uh, all of a sudden, I stopped hearing from him. And I thought, that's a little weird. And uh, 
Um, so I emailed him and asked him what was going on, and he said, well, he said, I'd love to go, but he said, about a year ago, I started getting this cough, and it started getting worse and worse and worse, and I kept going to these doctors and these overworked nurse practitioners, and they'd just say, oh, you know, you just here, here's some drugs, go, you know, you'll be fine. And he said, well, I finally went to the doctor, and I have lung cancer. And he said, I don't know, I've had it for a while, and I don't know if it's metastasized or not. And they said, but basically I could be dead by the end of the year. But I, I heard that from him, and I've known this man for 30 years. And he said, uh, and I said, I know this is hard for you, but I said, I also know I've known you all your life. And ever since I've known you, you put other people first in your life. You've been... I've admired you from the day I met you because of the way you live your life. And I said, I should be upset, and I am, but I also understand that it's in God's hands. It's always been in God's hands. And I know you'll be fine no matter what happens. And it's true with a lot of people. I mean, Master gave us these teachings. We're in duality, and you can't ignore you can't just say, I'm going to be happy all the time and not going to be sad, you know. Master has given us these teachings to transcend through wisdom, to transcend this world and to become one with God. And if you look at all the lives of saints, every single one of them, they don't go to God and say, boy, this is really a mess. God is, God is just a joke, you know. Every single one of them goes and says, God is joy. Your nature is joy. If you only knew what joy was just beneath your surface. Heaven is joy. Everybody tells us that. And yet, everybody knows it on some level. Christian, Muslim, everybody knows it in this world. But if you take a quick look at what goes on in this world, nobody lives their life like that. Like the joy is just right there and to live it for other people. It's just, I don't know, it's just not... Just not what people tune into, you know. They're always looking for something else. I saw a great uh, Saturday Night Live years ago, and I, I can't quite, I don't remember exactly what it was, but people were dying, and they were going to what they con conceived of as heaven, and they would go into this room, and this person would give them a number, and they'd go sit down. That was it. <laughs> 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 that was heaven, or I, I can't remember if that was heaven or hell, or the one in the middle. <laughs> it, was a, it was a long time ago. But, you know, our conceptions, it doesn't really matter. Like I say, it's kind of funny to me because it doesn't really matter what anybody believes. I mean, the truth is the truth. We're all in this together. We're all responsible. Um, I love the line from Edgar Casey. We make our way to heaven leaning on, the, leaning on the shoulders of the brothers we have helped. And it's true for all of us. We're all in this together. And there's no simple way to say, um, to get out. Yogananda promised, he said, if you're sincere, he said, you meditate 10, 10 minutes a day. If you're sincere, you will find God. 10 minutes, you know, it's such a hassle. <laughs> but, you know, and they said to other people, you know, they'll spend hours, but they're not really sincere about it, and they'll fall away and, and go do other things. But these teachings give us the keys to go deep to find God. And uh, I look back over my life, I've been connected with Ananda for, I don't know, 35 years or so, and think, what would my life be like if I hadn't been meditating, if I hadn't found this path? And it's Boy, I just don't know. It's, it's kind of a scary thought. But, you know, everybody has their own path. Everybody, you know, for some people, a fundamentalist path is perfect for them. You know, as long as you gain the respect, as long as you don't isolate people. I mean, I still don't get the mentality of, you know, jumping on the bus with a bomb and blowing a bunch of people up, thinking that they're going to go to heaven, and somehow this is going to be good for everybody. You know, that kind of, you know, that kind of mentality. Beliefs don't matter, you know. It's what's true. It's what's really, really true. 
And even if you just look at the basics, like we're all on human, we're all on Earth, we all have to deal with it one level, one way or another, whether the Earth warms up or whether the Earth gets cold, it doesn't matter, we're all in this together. And uh, it's one of the universal things that we have. Um, and we're all trying to find bliss. I mean, it's, it's you know, you find the drunk in the middle of the road, you know, what's he looking for? He's looking for bliss. He's trying to find it in a bottle. He's trying to find it in all kinds of ways outside of himself, but he's not any different than any of the rest of us. We're all trying to find that inner happiness. And we're lucky, we found, like I said, we have this teaching. We have a way to, uh, to, uh, to get there. It's, and God, God makes it work for us. We have, uh, I have another friend who was, uh, um, Kind of a sad story. She was a single mother and her daughter was 22 driving to San Francisco. She dropped something on the floor of the car, drove off the exit, ran into a telephone pole and died. And it was like, it was just devastating. I and mean, I can't imagine going through something so painful. And it was really hard for her for a couple of weeks and she said her daughter came to her in a dream and she said they've worked everything out. They talked to each other and everything worked and she said, I'm finally able to move on. And it was still a totally painful experience with, for her. But she was a very spiritual lady. And uh, I, uh, she was able to move on. I mean, that's what life is. It, life gives us, just knocks us around, you know. But if you're centered in God, if you're centered in the truth of it, and the fact that this is just a play, it's just a temporary thing. It will change. Um, Sue pointed out the movie, What Dreams May Come. I don't know if any of you remember that dream with Robin Williams. But he was looking for someone and he was in hell. And hell was all these heads stuck through mud. And he was walking across these heads. And they were all so wrapped up in their own pain, in their own life, that they didn't realize where they were. They were talking to themselves, and there were people all around them, just like this, but they didn't, nobody realized it, you know? They were just so withdrawn and into their own lives and into their own pain that they didn't realize, you know, that was their reality. And there are a lot of us like that. I mean, selfishness, you know, that's what starts it. We start thinking only about ourselves, and it's just like a, magnetic little whirlpool it just spins around and around and around and it's really hard to get out of you know the ego is a hard thing to break through Yogananda said it time and time again it, it's uh, um, that's why Yekteswar who those that don't know the second one here he has that stern look on his face but um, um, he didn't he didn't give the ego much truck. He, he pounded it pretty good because it wasn't true. It wasn't the way we should live our lives. You live in the ego, it's going to be painful. And uh, to me, he's, the, he's kind of the stern taskmaster because he just didn't put, up with, didn't put up with anything, didn't put up with the ego, didn't put up with the, with the pain that it causes people. He would have nothing to do with it. And it's, it's a good thing for us. Um, but again, Ten minutes is all it takes. I'm going to read. Uh, this is a, uh, as one of the monks at SRF said, this this reading. O oh, divine sculptor, chisel thou my life, and he gave a whole talk about this. Um, this this. With this saying from Whispers from Eternity, because uh, I'll read it to you. He said, Every sound that I make, let it have the vibration of thy voice. Every thought that I think, let it be saturated with the consciousness of thy presence. Let every feeling that I have glow with thy love. Let every act of my will be impregnated with thy divine vitality. Let every thought every expression, every ambition be ornamented by thee. O divine sculptor, chisel thou my life 
according to thy design. And of course the idea being, we are souls, you know, and God can chip away everything that isn't. We just have to let him do it. We have to learn to be channels of light, especially in this world today. It's just, I, I look around and I am just absolutely stunned at the stupidity of people. It just, I, it's, it's more prevalent now than I think it ever has been. And people like us, people who have a commitment to God and are good people, you know, you need to take control. We need to, we need to, uh, we need to stand up for what we believe in. You know, you can't, uh, like I said, we're all in this together. I now have an opportunity to give an offering. up here, so I guess I will. <laughs> Thank please, you. please take what you would like to give and hold it in your right hand and repeat after me. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Mother we offer to thee the fruit of our labors. We offer to thee the fruit of our labors. Bless this offering. Bless this offering. That it serve as a channel of thy light. That it serve as a channel of thy light. To true seekers everywhere. To true seekers everywhere. few announcements. Uh, first of all, there is a card downstairs for Freeman's birthday, which is October 1st, I believe. And uh, you can sign the card and leave a uh, donation for a gift for him downstairs. Also, there is going to be a bake sale 
after service to support the theater group and all specifically an event they're going to do around Halloween. So get some goodies and help support that. I'm actually not sure if it's in downstairs or in the yoga hall, but you'll find it in one of those two places. <laughs> uh, we also have a class coming up called Gandhi Meets St. Francis that will be on Wednesday, October 4th from 7 to 8.30. And uh, it's going to be uh, an evening with music, chanting, and stories to celebrate the universal and timely vision of peace and harmony, of personal dedication and commitment that these two great souls offer us by the example of their lives. It's free. And there's no names on here, but I know Jamina is going to be doing it, and David Key. The two of them will be presenting that class. So, and lastly, I want to say something about the festive event that's coming up on October 14th. Uh, you're invited to a free festive evening of dinner and entertainment in the Yoga Hall on Saturday, October 14th at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome and your RSVP will help us to plan for the food. Lisa and Buddy will be cooking a free Indian meal and so we'd like to have a count. Uh, you might have received, received something in the mail about this and you may have uh, mailed in your RSVP. If you didn't, Michelle will be at the back of service today <coughs> with a clipboard and looking to get names. Just makes it easier for us to know how many people to cook for. Uh, this is an Indian meal and you're all invited to wear your best decorative Indian attire. It'll be fun for everyone. We're going to have some wonderful stories from India by Morley. And uh, let's see, you'll get an update on the yoga hall progress and you'll learn about the new plan for the next three years to support the yoga hall. And with your, with your generosity, we'll be, we will be better able to grow into the additional mortgage and facility costs that have come with the completion of the yoga hall. So, let's see. And that's it. So, let's do our affirmation for the year. Repeat after me at first loudly. I stand calmly amidst life storms. I stand calmly amidst life storms. Strength and courage fill my body cells. Strength and courage fill my body cells. In a normal voice. I stand calmly amidst life storms. I stand calmly amidst life storms. Strength and courage fill my body cells. Strength and courage fill my body cells. I stand calmly amidst life storms. Strength and courage fill my body cells. And now silently offering it up at the spiritual eye. I stand calmly amidst life storms. Strength and courage fill my body cells. Om, peace, amen. now have the Festival of Light <clears throat> in your little booklets if you're new. On page five we have the words for the songs that go along with the festival if you want to follow along or know what we're singing. After service, before we uh, go to the yoga hall for snacks and fellowship, we're going to have the drawing for the raffle. Uh, someone uh, can win the quilt today. If it has a name on the ticket, if it has a number on the ticket, we'll, we'll go to plan B, I guess. So. <laughs> anyway, this is the day. Go ahead. Let us lift up our hearts in a festival of light. The essence of this ceremony has been passed down from ancient times. O oh, waves that we are on the bosom of the infinite sea, joyfully together let us celebrate our own greater reality. For now, by God's grace, our redemption is at hand. The promise has been given, the divine light returning anew to earth has given us the power, as the Holy Bible proclaims, to become the sons of God. 
Into that our hands have been delivered the sacred keys of awakening. Abundant now is our hope. The Lord through the Bhagavad Gita promised, even the worst of sinners by steadfast meditation on me speedily comes to me. And again in that holy scripture he declared, even a little practice of this inward religion will free one from dire fears and colossal sufferings. And whereas suffering and joy in the past were the coin of man's redemption, for now, for us now the payment has been exchanged for calm acceptance and joy. Thus may we understand that pain is the fruit of self-love, whereas joy is the fruit of love for God. From sun and moon and all the stars and glistening seas, high mountains, desert solitudes, and vast fruitful plains, and from the hearts of mankind and creatures everywhere, goes up in wordless yearning a prayer for redemption. Please stand and repeat after me. O mighty source of all that is, O mighty source of all that is, from sorrow lead us to everlasting joy, from sorrow lead us to everlasting joy, from darkness lead us to infinite light, from darkness lead us to infinite light, from death lead us to immortality, from death lead us to immortality. Please be seated. A fledgling bird once flew out into the world, gained strength and wisdom, its parents told it, and what you acquire, share with others, even as we have shared with you, for you are a part of all that is. Thus, Lord, we left you countless eons ago. Ours was a holy mission. You charged us to learn great lessons from life, to be fruitful in the gifts you had given us, to expand and multiply them. Alas, we abandoned our mission. Instead, we hoarded selfishly, nor did wisdom come to us when repeatedly we lost everything we had. For the young bird in flight for the first time gloried in its newfound strength. It began to think, how foolish I would be to share my strength with anyone. What else is wisdom if not to keep what is mine for myself? And so we, like that bird, entered upon the second stage of the soul's long journey away from its home in God, that stage which is called the revolt. That bird's brief day was like eons of our time. When afternoon came, it entered the storm cloud and soon found itself struggling for its life. Wind and rain lashed at its wings. The more it fought back, the weaker it became. Give yourself into my hands, cried the wind. To your strength I can then add my own. At last the little bird heeded this counsel. Then suddenly it found itself soaring joyously, high above the clouds. Hours passed, and night fell, and the little bird grew afraid. How, it cried, can I fly in this darkness? And the night whispered, Fear not, for lo, peace awaits you in the unknown. Surrender to me and your strength will be renewed. And after a time, the tiny rebel surrendered and found the night's counsel true. And rain and sky and grassy fields all sang, Behold, your strength to fly has never been your own. Look to the source of all power, if you would conquer fear and weakness. And the bird asked, Where can I find that source? And they answered, Seek it in the farthest depths of being in your own self. Thus gradually the bird entered the third stage of the journey, which is called the quest. We now, like that little bird, have come to realize that buffeting winds are life's ways of giving us strength and courage. That even fear, like shadows on the statue, gives light and substance to hope. From the depths of unknowing, Lord, we cry out to thee, is there no lasting purpose to our lives? Behold, all that we thought was light was but darkness. Who are we in reality? For what end were we made? Ever and again through your awakened sons the answer comes. The forming of stars and moons and planets, of galaxies revolving on the tides of space, of drifting continents, upheaving mountains, snowy wastes and dark silent ocean deeps had but this for its design, the birth of life. 
and with life's birth the dawn of self-awareness, passage through dim corridors of waking consciousness to emerge at last into the infinite light, into perfect joy. O oh, children of light, forsake the darkness. Please stand. Know that forever you and he are one. Raise your hands and chanting Om. Ask that the power of God replenish you in body, mind, and soul. Oh. Such, O Lord, was your promise. Gaze upon this light is a symbol of God's love. A prayer of love went up from the earth, and you responded. A ray of your light flashed out from the heart of infinity, burst downward through night skies of consciousness, and was born on earth for the redemption of mankind in human form. Many times has that light descended, drawn to earth by the call of aspiring love. Your chosen people have always been those of every race and nation who with deep love chose thee. Please pray with me, O Lord, o Lord with all my heart, with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my soul, and with all my strength. And with all my strength. I choose thy love. I choose thy love. I choose only thee. I choose only thee. The infinite Christ consciousness, the only begotten, has come down anew to earth for the salvation of mankind. When we need you, Lord, our beloved, you descend. Our human griefs, your love alone can mend. By proud indifference unaffected, though eternally rejected, you remain our friend. Long we fear to face your love, lest our emptiness it prove. Now we give you who remain our friend long we fear to face your love lest our emptiness it prove now at last our hearts we give you 
Eyes filled with divine love, Jesus appeared to the great master Babaji. The lights on the high altar of my church, he said, have grown dim. Though still lit on the lower altars of good work, the noble taper of inner communion with the Lord burns low and is ill-attended. Let us together, united in Christ's love, set lights ablaze on the high altar once again. Thus, the new ray of light was sent to earth through the great masters of this path. Greater can no love be than this, from a life of infinite joy and freedom in God, willingly to embrace limitation, pain, and death for the salvation of mankind. Such ever has been the sacrifice of the great masters of the world. Here, then, is the fourth and last stage of the soul's long journey through time and space, the redemption. Lord, we offer up to you the light that is in us into thy blazing light of infinity. Grant us the grace to know thee and make us ever increasingly pure channels of thy love to all. Please stand. Thy light within us shining has freedom from earth he was confining to soar in spirit skies. How oft like sheep we strayed apart, now guided by thy rays. We celebrate the grace of God that has come anew to earth through our line of gurus, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Sri Yukteswar, and Paramahansa Yogananda. This grace is eternally channeled to mankind by great masters in every religion. It has been given new clothing by our gurus to reflect man's dawning awareness that matter is only a manifestation of divine energy. In God, all are equal. Not only Jesus Christ, Lord Krishna, and the great saints everywhere, but even in essence those on earth who have sinned most greatly. Joyfully lifting up our hearts in song, we pray that we who earnestly seek communion with your light receive it in our lives abundantly. Father, Mother, Friend, our God, we thy wonder. invite those who feel so inclined to come up to the altar and receive the touch of light from the masters. As you approach, offer a prayer of gratitude to the infinite Christ, 
in whose love our line of masters had descended, that we might all come to God. Pray, too, for the grace to share with all as you have received, for you are a part of all that is. May the light of Christ, the infinite consciousness, shine upon you. Om Christ, Amen. Om Christ, Oh. 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 send out to all the world the blessing that we have received.
Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Babaji Krishna, Jyoti Mahashaya, Jyoti Mahashaya, Swami Sri Teshwar, Swami Sri Teshwar, and Paramahansa Yogananda, and Paramahansa Yogananda. Beloved Masters, Beloved Masters, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, be with us now. Be with us now. Be with us forever. Be with us forever. That Thy love may shine forever. That Thy love may shine forever. On the sanctuary of our devotion. On the sanctuary of our devotion. And help us to be able. And help us to be able to awaken Thy love. To awaken Thy love in all hearts. In all hearts. Om. Please. Amen. Amen. Go out with joy. Joy, 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 ever new. Joy, 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 ever new. Joy, 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 ever new. Joy, 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 joy. Okay, um, since Haley's not here yet, she should be, um, I'd like to invite you all to the yoga hall to have some treats, and then we have our three-table farm stand, and uh, we'll have cider and prana mix and goodies, so come see us. <laughs> <laughs>